Welcome back to Modern Art Blitz. My name is Matt Gleason. I'm your host. We have three guests today, and our second guest of the episode 63, Ruzana Berberian. Was that right? Did I pronounce it right? Almost. Yes. Ruzan, Ruz, can I? Do I roll the R? Is yes, that? Yes, you do. You do. But do you, does one roll the R to say your name yes, properly? Yes. Ruzana. Ruzana. Ruzana Berberian. Oh my God, I love it. Yes. So <laughs> now Ruzana has disobeyed my orders and she has worn we shoot on a green screen and we tell our guests please do not wear bright green i'm wearing bright yellow socks and they're kind of disappearing and then they go yellow again but rosanna you have disobeyed my orders is this a primer on dealing with an armenian woman is this is, or should everyone pay attention here yes of course <laughs> we are passive aggressive that way so 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 um there see now you've you've completely disappeared now these behind you are not circuit boards they are your paintings correct yes they are yes so so uh are these acrylic no, these are oil. Oil on oil canvas? On canvas. Uh, actually, uh, the lines on them are acrylic, but then primarily the substrate is um, oil. Now, do you paint acrylic? And then you would ask, you never paint. Do you paint acrylic on oil? Yes. Or do you paint? You, yes, you that's paint? how I disobeyed. Oh, you've disobeyed. You've I worn disobeyed. A so green far, I have this painting for. Shirt on a green screen. Yeah. And now we find out that you are. Oh, I don't know what we're going to do with you. Such independent women. Um, so, <laughs> So, um, what year are these from? Actually, I worked on this for a few years. It started probably, the one in the center, it started probably 2005-ish. Oh, but wow. then I worked for many years. 2005? Um, the reason oh. I put these paintings because I uh, just wanted to show the transition, how I transitioned this analog type of circuit board into digital and flexible circuit boards. That's the reason I put this. Ah, okay. These were the, okay. actually first painting when I went into painting circuit boards. And are these like like if we were sitting in a gallery, would they look? Would we are we proportionate with them? Uh, no, these are small, probably twelve by twelve. Twelve by the twelve. The small ones, okay. and then the other ones one probably a little bit bigger. Yeah. These okay. are not big paintings. Okay. But um, it took me quite a while to paint them. Oh yeah. Because all those the tiny components on them, I put many many layers of acrylic to build the texture. It's a little bit thicker than they look, but um, that's how it started. And where do you, where do you get your colors from? I mean, because some, like this I, one has the green of a traditional circuit board, but the others, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a fantastic. Yeah, they are, but uh, I got my colors from those components. Oh, really? I so you I disassembled a lot of computers, and then with analog technology, you can see a lot of components have these beautiful jewel tone colors. And so then I inspired, these are inspired by those. Do you consider these to be abstract paintings? People think they're abstraction, but actually most of them are pretty realistic. Uh, I do my own compositions, I work with them, but then you can see the circles and the curves are pretty much. So it's abstraction grounded in a, a reality, and the, a reality that we, we work with every day, but we don't really see, right? Yes, this well, is my way of this, deconstructing this stuff, these communication devices. I mean, these were from computers from early times, but then you can see uh, future work, later work, it's mostly from communication devices, cameras and camcorders and wow, things wow, that wow. collect um, and store information. And that's, and where did this fascination begin? Um, surveillance. Surveillance. <laughs> and then phones and surveillance. And then I was fascinated to see how these things collect and transfer information. Mostly it started with communication because um, I think transition time we saw how people started being disconnected from each other and then constantly communicating but being disconnected from each other. So even with these phones, I just wanted to see what's inside that kind of gathers all this information. And I disassembled this stuff. Have you ever smashed open an iPhone? <laughs> Let's do it right now. Sure. This is your phone. No, not, not my phone. <laughs> not, not your, oh, okay. So it's fine for other people's circuit boards, but not yes, very. Yes, let's, let's see what else we have here. Oh, okay, now. This was um, also one of the first paintings when I went into a more minimalist approach, and this was a flexible circuit board. So I realized as technology changes and also circuits inside cameras and camcorders change and phones because they become those flexible circuit boards make it possible for these objects to become smaller and smaller in size because you cannot fit these hard boards into these devices. And even components you can see from 1960s, 70s, suddenly the size shrinks also and the colors change a little bit. It becomes more minimalistic colors. 
But then um, those lines and little simple shapes, I just picked those and uh, made this large. This is six foot by six foot painting, very simple. Six foot by six foot? Yeah, it's, it's a big painting. It's, it was one of my first paintings when I used wow. uh, the minimalistic approach in the circuit board. And now, are you influenced at all by the minimalist artists? Um, Did you study minimalism? Not that much, but um, influenced a lot of, uh, with precisionist. The precisionist. Future, futurist. Uh, precisionist. Well, it's all based on futurism, really. Yeah, futurism, and then it came into precisionism. After that, uh, California Hard Edge. You so, like the California Hard Edge? I like So, John so, Clark so, Lennon. is there, uh, okay, here's the thing. Okay. <laughs> when I looked at this, I was like, wow, John McLaughlin with, with yeah. Ellsworth Kelly's yes. colors. Yeah, I mean, so. there's, there's, and there's, there's a lot going on. Now, is there anything, I mean, minimalism, traditionally considered to be very, uh, you know, masculine field, very, mm -hmm. you know, dominated by men in the 50s and 60s. Okay. Um, engineering, circuitry and all this, masculine field, dominated by men in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Is there something, are you claiming this? Is there a feminism to what you're doing? There, there's no feminism, but looking back, I was an engineering major in Armenia, so I'm just thinking growing up, with my uncle used to make a lot of electronic devices in homes, so I was, since childhood I was exposed with all these components and then circuit boards. My husband repairs photographic equipment, so I'm constantly exposed with this stuff, and my fascination is with the designs with these components. They're really fascinating. It's something you don't see, but then sometimes I use a magnifying glass just to observe those, and just fascinating designs. I just magnify them and can't get enough of them. Wow, wow, wow. So, but how much of this is based on the actual design, and how much of it is you? A little bit is this inspired by the designs, and most of it, it's me. It's you. Because as an artist, I can just copy something. I just get inspired, but I change the colors, composition. With this particular painting, I use a lot of golden ratio. It's like extreme calculations between everything um, proportionately, and I spend a ton of time to make my paintings proportionately pleasing. And if something does not work, I don't mind erasing and sketching it over and over until, for me, uh, instinctively and also um, compositionally it needs to work and your blue top matches yes, the, it the does. painting it, it's Look, just it's fascinating it's, <laughs> so let's see uh, let's see some more uh, I love the and uh, <laughs> this so one. now what's the roundness here okay so after that painting I think this is the one that uh, started my current series and the roundness is exactly that button in your cameras or, or actually no in your phones, that round part, that's how circuit looks yeah. underneath the push buttons. This, the, oh, so, uh, that's where the button... You, if you have any buttons in most electronic devices, somehow they look like this. So that's a connection to the outside world. Yes, that's a connection. <laughs> if that's the portal. If, if we, have you ever seen that movie Tron where they get trapped in the computer? I haven't and seen, but people keep suggesting people keep, that movie. I you, should yeah, watch you got to watch Tron because, because that's our way out right there, that button. So, okay. Actually, that's supposedly connecting us to different worlds and disconnect us. The moment we push this button, wow. <laughs> we get disconnected from each other. Oh, that's a good way to look at it. It's poetic, so, a poetic so way. Technology has these two things. It can be um, abstracting and also can be very pleasurable. It, it opens many doors, but then we get, it, it becomes its own addiction too, so, yeah. you know. My point, you know, I'm not against technology that much. I'm not a Luddite, but then people think, okay, you just um, raise these issues. But then I just want to be aware of like what it does, especially with surveillance and then how it collects information. And then it's so relevant today because, you know, it's constantly, we're being monitored. Look, all these million cameras we have over here. There's no, no, there's no privacy, well, we're, there's no nothing. We're, Every single move is being uh, recorded. The Dronebox studio, we only have three cameras. You could go to the bathroom at Disneyland well, and there could be five. There, I can well, see. <laughs> okay, okay. We're in a very large studio doing this. So, um, and, and these colors, and I was also fascinated with early uh, Art Deco colors, and then I would look through a lot of... Um, this looks very Deco, and yet it, it's like, it's, you know, 100 years is, after Deco. Yeah, so uh, it's not like, um, I don't adhere to certain styles, certain things, whatever feels right for that particular painting. I go through a lot of swatches. I go to Home Depot and I have a ton of swatches when I just go over on and on to make sure, you know, color balance, everything works, so. I, I love your striped top. It's just so, so cool. <laughs> so let's, let's continue, because these are just great paintings. Oh, wow, here's the whole lineup. Now, these are starting to look a little like portraits of people. 
Yeah, so um, because I thought technology kind of started being like this worshiping icon, and um, this was my show when I got my MFA at Cal State LA. So this was a show I did, and I, these are flexible circuits in contrast with the earlier painting you saw, which, which was more busier. So I, I chose um, areas that look more anthropomorphic. Oh, and yeah. Because we worship these icons, and the scale is also two by six, and um, look like this religious. For me, this was my way of showing religious icons in, for modern era. The average person's basically two by two six, by six. right? Um, it's kind of my proportions, and I love working with this scale. And then object ground relationship, you can see it's more like a portrait. Here's a head. And if you see these paintings, and then if you start, start seeing faces, you cannot unsee them. <laughs> Reach out, tickle, tickle, tickle. Okay, so oh, that's the uh, one that does this. Yeah. So, 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 uh, are these based on anybody you know? Um, maybe one or two. You know, <laughs> the, the first one over there, in the purple, the round head. Yes, is this way. The first painting. Oh, okay. it's me. It's like that's this. you. That's you. Wait, over the. Wait. Yeah, that one on this side. Over yeah, there. That one. Yeah, that one. This one yes. is you. Yes, it's me. Oh, okay. And it was the first uh, in this series that I used this type of uh, very challenging to paint um, because very sim it seems very simple, but uh, I paint with oil. Uh, therefore, it takes me a lot of time to make the lines very straight. Yeah. I'm, uh, do you do you tape? Do you use a lot of t tape? That's I do tape them, but people think once you tape, it's really easy. Um, it's still not because pulling not. up the, is the pulling up the tape the hardest it's, part. It's not because um, canvas is textural and oil is very viscous, so it, it goes underneath. So I just get this exacto knife and then with just like holding my breath, try to make it. Oh my God! That's you get surgical. Specifically, I, I go oh. <laughs> even half a millimeter. I, if I see any um, mishaps, I try to fix them. Oh, you're killing me here. You're killing me. You're killing me here. So um, let's look. I want to see more. We have more of your art. Do we have one? I Do don't we know. have a. Oh, what's this? Uh, this is the last work I'm working um, on April 27th. I'm invited to participate in the grand opening of Zadik Zadikian Studio Space, which is called Produce House. It's at the, it's at the Produce Mart, right? It's in a Produce Mart. Uh, it's a large. Downtown studio. LA, 7th and Alameda, like? Uh, yes. Uh, and it's a large studio space, so Zadik invited eight artists, I think including him, eight artists, and he's doing grand opening. The place is called Produce House now. And he gave uh, one wall to each artist and then asked them to create their art. So this is above the stairs, once you go into second floor, 10 foot by 20 feet, um, high ceiling. So I'm making a portal there. It looks like um, one of those portals. I call it Nexus so far, I'm not sure about the title, but you're still working. It's still oh, in progress. Still you could progress. you could you could change it tomorrow, right? So April twenty seventh, uh, Thursday is the opening from seven to ten. It's going to be huge. April twenty seventh, Thursday. It's Thursday night. Why Thursday? I have no idea. <laughs> I think that's a good night. I mean, because there's you have a lot less competition. Probably. Although the traffic can be oof, man. I didn't think of why it's Thursday, but um, yeah, I'm painting, and it's very. When I go up. 20 foot high on that ceiling. I have to be mentally ready. So some days I'm not. Be ready. careful on that ladder. That's you know. I'm. You mean you're not going to push my wheelchair if I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to visit. I visit enough people in the uh, in the nursing homes. Um, so so uh, you were raised in Soviet Armenia. Yes, I was. You were, and you got out of there when that wall fell, or did you no, wait for the wall just, before just the wall? Before, before 1990, it was two years before. Oh, okay. And. Oh, I like that, your floor. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I was one of the first protest protesters in Armenia. I was an engineering um, student at Karl Marx Polytechnic Institute. You went to <laughs> Karl Marx? Hi. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Karl Marx Radio Poly. studying radio engineering. So um, I remember our institute students, they started protesting. And then I, I've done a lot of, uh, for months, we would go and then do a sitting. Uh, a sit-in? Yes, it means oh, wow. so hours and hours, and um, and then later I moved to United States to see Michael Jackson. Well, there's you. Did you? If Michael Jackson drew you to the. It yes. could have. It could. It could have been Devo, but it was Michael Jackson. <laughs> so, um, well, April twenty seventh, you're going to be at Produce House. Yes. Okay. It's a grand opening. Looking forward to uh, Zadik, Zadikian's new space uh, in downtown LA. 
the, the, the latest of a uh, lot of lot of lot of things happening in downtown LA. You don't need to go to the West Side anymore. No. Uh, I'd like to thank my guest, Ruzana. Ruzana. Ruzana Berberian. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Modern Art Blitz. Thank you, man. Ooh, that jewelry stabbed me. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> Stay.